I'm Dr. Stuart Clark. I'm an astronomer and I'm the author of The Unknown Universe. It, it's so clearly obvious that the world isn't flat. Before being indoctrinated into the heliocentric globe lie, what is actually so clearly obvious is that the world is flat and motionless. No sovereign-minded adult or child without previous exposure to the heliocentric globe myth would ever find such a thing to be so clearly obvious, because there is no empirical evidence whatsoever to support it. The horizon always appears perfectly flat, 360 degrees around everyone, regardless of altitude. All amateur balloon, rocket, plane, and drone footage show a completely flat horizon over 20 plus miles high, with only NASA and other government space agencies showing curvature in their fake CGI photos and fisheye lens videos. Thus, what is clearly obvious is that Australians are not hanging upside down relative to Americans on a fantastical spinning ball, and you cannot dig a hole to China and find more sky below you. It requires years of indoctrination using computer graphics, camera trickery, and generations of lying Freemasonic astronauts to make people believe such things. All young children, uncontacted tribes, and others free from globe indoctrination rightly assume the Earth to be a level, motionless plane, because it is perceivably, empirically, and objectively so. Only after having our common sense and personal experience of the world completely obliterated by heliocentric brainwashing could one believe otherwise. We see when ships um, uh, leave the harbour, you can see as they gradually um, disappear below the horizon. His next argument comes from ancient Greek philosophers who have been debunked since the time they were presented even way back then. The fact that NASA's top modern globe proofs are still simply regurgitating long-refuted claims from over 2,000 years ago should raise some suspicion. The fact of the matter is that the law of perspective on plane surfaces dictates and necessitates this occurrence. For example, a girl wearing a dress walking away towards the horizon will appear to sink into the earth the farther away she walks. Her feet will disappear from view first, and the distance between the ground and the bottom of her dress will gradually diminish until after about half a mile it seems like her dress is touching the ground as she walks on invisible legs. The same happens with cars speeding away. The axles gradually get lower, and the wheels vanish until it appears as if the car is gliding along its body. Such is the case on plane surfaces. The lowest parts of objects receding from a given point of observation necessarily disappear before the highest. Now, with modern telescopes and cameras, we can prove this as well by successfully zooming in on ships that have gone beyond the horizon and bringing them completely back into full view, hull and all. Um, you can see if you go up onto a, a tall tower or a hill and you see more over the horizon. Rising in altitude always allows an observer to see further regardless of the shape of the ground beneath them. This is also part of the law of perspective on plane surfaces, but you just showed with your last point that you fail to understand perspective, so it is no surprise that you also believe seeing further to the horizon when rising in altitude somehow means you live on a sphere. Whether you were over a sphere, a cylinder, a triangle, or a flat motionless earth, rising in altitude will always allow the observer to see further. This is an undeniable fact and acting like this only happens on a globe is either disgustingly dishonest or incredibly ignorant. Uh, all our physics is constructed now. The physics of orbits, actually things going around um, the Earth, is all constructed um, with, with three-dimensional um, spherical world. The physics of orbits of things going around the Earth are constructed for a 3D spherical world. The key word here is constructed. Working mathematical models can be constructed and made to work with any kind of physics or orbits and modeled in 3D, as you can see with modern video games and graphics software. This does not mean that these working physics models coincide with the actual, natural world. NASA, in fact, admits over and over again in their mathematical models and official documentation that they are actually making all calculations assuming a flat and motionless Earth 
and not a tilting, wobbling, spinning, oblate sphere. And the pictures from, uh, from space show our world as a globe. Um, and yet somehow, yeah, there are some, some people that still seem to believe um, that the Earth is flat. And yet again, when you ask supposed scientists how they know the Earth is a globe, they inevitably offer up the suggestion that pictures prove it. Pictures like these, Dr. Stewart? Pictures like these? And these? I know you already know this, but pictures like these obvious CG images can be and are faked, and are not permissible as scientific evidence. Imagine for a moment that, yeah, the Earth, that the Earth was flat. Well, um, how much thickness does it then have? These are the kind of questions you'd have to ask. These are also questions you should be asking of your spinning ball Earth, Dr. Clark. How much thickness does your ball actually have? Wikipedia and every elementary school textbook will claim the globe is nearly 4,000 miles to the center where there exists the alleged source of magnetism in their model, a hypothetical molten magnetic core in the center of the ball which they claim conveniently causes both poles to constantly move, thus evading independent verification at their two ceremonial poles. In reality, the deepest drilling operation in history, the Russian Kola Superdeep, after decades of work and dozens of broken drills, managed to get only eight miles down. So the entire ball earth model taught in schools, showing a crust, outer mantle, inner mantle, outer core, and inner core layers, are all purely speculation, as we have never even penetrated through beyond the crust. So regardless of the shape of the earth, nobody knows what is beneath eight miles down. But people like Dr. Clark would rather scoff at flat earthers for not simply believing pictures in textbooks like these without empirical proof. Um, you know, okay, okay, you've got an edge. Well, would things fall off the edge? You've got an edge? You, Dr. Clark, have got an edge on your silly straw man spinning flat circle image, but not a single legitimate flat earther claims there to be an edge. Thanks to the Antarctic Treaty, signed by over 50 countries, it is impossible to independently explore the southern perimeter of Earth to find out how the Antarctic ice terminates. No genuine flat earther knows or claims to know such things. But again, globe minions like Dr. Clark are so convinced of their own straw man arguments that it's clear they have never taken the time to research what real flat earthers actually claim. Well. How do you generate gravity to make the things fall? What is it that's actually causing the gravity to make things fall off the, off the end? Again, nothing is falling off the end of your silly fake flat earth edge, but when it comes to the effects of so-called gravity, they are easily explained. Quite simply, objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air, and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface, because even though a pebble is so small, its mass relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass relative to its volume is less than water, so it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle instead of on his head, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. Have you ever noticed how it's easier to stay afloat with your lungs full of air than it is when they're empty? Submarines float on the surface when their ballast tanks are filled with air, 
but when the vents are opened and seawater floods in, they begin to sink as the submarine's density becomes greater than water. Depending what depth they wish to dive, sailors simply adjust the ratio of air and water in their tanks, and when ready to resurface, they blow compressed air into the tanks, forcing the seawater out, lowering the density, and thus causing them to rise back to the surface. We can also prove this fact of relative density by filling a balloon with approximately half helium and half air. Since helium is lighter than the oxygen, nitrogen, and other gases that compose the air around us, filling a balloon with just the right amount of helium to compensate for and balance out the density of the plastic results in a gravity-defying, levitating balloon at equilibrium that neither rises nor falls. Um, I, I, it's hard to even begin, actually, to talk about what, so, what a flat Earth would be like because it's just, it's just so impossible. The flat, motionless Earth is not only possible, it's actual. What is impossible, however, is making that fact known to people who so thoroughly believe the prevailing model first presented to them that they cannot open their minds enough to even question it.